Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Legend of Korra Book 3 Change episode commentary. This one's going to be for Book 3 Change episode um, 8, The Terror Within. Now to sync up your copy of the episode with this commentary track, what you need to do is have the episode ready to start, including the um, opening to the show, which is obviously the Kyoshi uh, Earth, Fire, Air, Water bit with all the avatars. I'm going to stop speaking now in a moment, and then when I come back, you know, when I start speaking again after a pause, you hit play and you'll be synced up with my commentary track, because I'll be hitting play at the same time. So, uh, I'm going to stop speaking now, and when I talk again, hit play. So, okay, here we are with uh, K-308, The Terror Within. Uh, Action-packed episode, we see the Red Lotus make their move to try and capture Korra for the first time, and, you know, it sets up this kind of mystery that ends up being a thing until, like, the final episode of why exactly are the Red Lotus trying to kidnap Korra rather than just kill her? It's very specific that they don't want her to be killed, and... You know, um, I feel it's one of those things that it was kind of set up as being some really cool explanation, and then it turned out to be just, oh, they want to kill the Avatar in the Avatar state to get rid of the Avatar, because they see the Avatar as a kind of world leader figure. I, I thought it was leading up to something more plot-focused about, like, the specifics of the Red Lotus, but no, not really. Um, and again, it's one of those episodes that kind of highlights some of the issues I kind of have with um, the book, and that, uh, you know... We don't really get to learn a lot about the Red Lotus. And in this episode, we see them a lot, but it's only really in terms of fighting. Um, so we don't really learn about them specifically. They don't really have a lot of dialogue, except Zaheer. But, um, yeah. Interesting, we open up with some metal bending training. Bolin, not working out so well, but uh, Korra is doing really good. She's practicing with Wei or Wing. I can never tell which one is which. Um, and then, yeah, that, that's a setup right there. I like that. That um, that little how accurate Bolin is with normal earth bending comes into play later on. It's not normal, and here's Korra just being amazing at it, uh, defeating Wei or Wing, whichever one of them it is. And yeah, Opal's farewell dinner. I said in the last commentary, I kind of wish Opal would have been in the original Airbenders episode. That maybe that one was set after this episode or something like that. But maybe that would have messed up some of the continuity a little bit. But still, I uh, I wish we'd got more character stuff on her. Like this episode, you get a little bit more on just before she kind of completely kind of exits the series until like the finale. And you really see how much uh, Bolin likes Opal and cares about her. That's just, <laughs> they're going to be apart for a while. That's in the future. And here's Varric with relationship advice, which is funny and almost feels like set up for the Xiu Li Varric relationship that really comes into play next book. This is a complete pointless scene. Like, it, 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 Varric isn't really involved in this book. And then this uh, device, it's like an airbender finder, and then it's just the joke is, it only works when you airbend into it. It's just like, oh my god. It's so uh, confusing. <laughs> a further scene about like showing Mako separated from the group a bit doesn't feel comfortable around the rest of them but um, still <laughs> just nice to see the, the brothers a little bit upset that she's leaving But yeah, not a, not a massive amount going on right now, you know, just Opal leaves, it, it's, very, it's very kind of quick opening, just like, okay, emotional farewell dinner. There's Kuvira, set up, set up, set up. Um, but uh, it's interesting how the events of the last couple of episodes of this book completely set up a position where Kuvira eventually becomes what she is in book four. Um, it's actually a really cool setup. Uh, yeah. 
not much, not a lot going on until they obviously infiltrate, and then the, later on you get the reveal of Iway. I think it's in the next. Is it in this episode or is it? No, I think it's towards the end of this episode and then into the next episode. I always kind of forget. Um, but yeah, obviously the animals are the first one to sense anything going wrong, and uh, he wakes up uh, Bolin. A yeah, really cool use of uh, Mingwa's water arms there to carefully open the, uh, could open the glass. And even just the fact that she can, with the her water bending, just fire those darts, that's interesting. And poor Naga taken out. And poor Korra taken out. And again, it shows that apart from like a few training scenes, she's not really involved in any fights until like the very end of this book. It's, uh, it, it's actually pretty weird. Like, um, and it's, it's 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 a weird thing to say, but this book isn't very Korra focused. Like she's not really what the plot revolves around all that much, except for the fact that oh, as a kidnap victim, you know they want to kidnap her and kill her. Like it's more about Korra is important because she is the Avatar rather than Korra as a character in this book. And here's the big fight starts, and unfortunately everyone is in their pajamas, not prepared for this, but. Uh, it's cool to see our big, our first big kind of hero versus the villains engagement, like full on, and how you know the Red Lotus are at a huge disadvantage here. You know, just the four of them against a whole city full of basically really powerful metal blenders, plus some even more impressive characters like uh, Mako Balin, Korra herself, though she's kind of taken out of the picture straight away. And yeah, this is a really cool sequence. It's just it's, it's it's a very tactical battle that you see here, in that they the Red Lotus kind of they they create this situation where they kind of trap the Red Lotus. Gazan creates a kind of moat for them to kind of give some distance, and it ends up being just this kind of like uh, kind of trench warfare almost like that. That uh, their heroes kind of have to attack from the outside into this really defensive area that the Red Lotus have. Um, really shows how powerful lava bending is. It's just kind of like. And it's kind of set up for Bolin learning lava bending later on, but um, still. And I suppose that this is kind of the scene where you get the setup for the Pali rivalry with uh, Lin and Sue, um, because obviously they get very frustrated with her. They're ultimately the ones who kind of activate the kind of full part of the plan to kind of take her out in this fight with Bolin. And that's kind of sets up their involvement in the fight later on. And uh, it's it's interesting that like Kuvira is like this amazing metal bender, and you don't really see her like do a massive amount in the, in this book in, in 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 this fight. When like it would have been interesting if they just gave her a little moment where she went one on one with one of the Red Lotus, and, you know, showed that she is a little bit step above them, but. They went with the more subtle setup until much later on. And then Sue comes with the plan to attack from above. <laughs> yeah, except they're gonna get blown up. Uh, that's a bad move. But yeah, because this is a very action packed scene, there's not a massive amount to like. Um, really talk about in terms of character motives and stuff like that, but uh, I do like the action here, it's a very packed episode, it's just kind of interesting to kind of see that like all the action is happening in that dome, and outside it looks all peaceful, because it is just four on a couple of people in the city. Yeah, it's Bolin time, they put all their faith in Bolin, chucking the small rock at her third eye and blocking it. Miss on the first, miss on the second, and the third, and the fourth. Um, this, this is really a tense situation, like, no go, and they've missed the no, and they're just like, okay, go. And they jump in, and you think, oh my goodness, the two of them are going to get killed by Philly. But, uh, no, Bolin, with the clutch 
small rock to the forehead. Love the slow motion, just like whoosh. And they quickly kind of like take them out a little bit and have enough time to escape. And uh, yeah, that that there's the setup for the the Mako Mingwa rivalry. Uh, you don't really get much for the Gazan Bolin bit just yet, because um, obviously Bolin doesn't have lava bending at this point in time, and they haven't really come one on one. But yeah, so here is taken out by the two sisters. Just they bit off a bit more than they could chew here. It's the first time you've really seen the Red Lotus. It's not these perfect, you know, they they win every fight uh, benders, and they manage to very quickly escape. And Cora is safe, which is the key important thing. There's Iway giving her some medicine. Yeah, n n now that I remember, it, like this is the episode where the investigation happens. The second part of the episode, uh, Iway is kind of revealed towards the end of the episode. So, sorry I'm not talking as much in this commentary, it's just, as I said, there's not as much to talk about uh, just yet. Um, but yeah, here's the, the questioning beginning, I weigh this truth here, and it's a little bit kind of obvious that I suppose it was I weigh behind it, because, you know, um, of course it's the guy who knows how to sense if someone's lying or not, that is the guy who is the one they're looking for. And then he tries to blame it on the one guy who looks a little bit nervous uh, I like the Varrickson in question as well Lyme disease Varicalisthenics And Lynn's starting to question Sue uh, now once again. Like the, you thought that they're past it all, but no, she brings it up. But Sue is happy to do so. And this is this is where a really interesting thing happened in the fandom. Everyone started to suspect Sue. It's it's because of that little eye movement there, where she starts, where she kind of looks up and to the left. Um, but she's told to be the truth. Everyone was thinking she's part of the Red Lotus secretly. It's uh, it's Zaheer in the in the old uh, circus photo with her but it's not, that, that's confirmed not to be the case and ultimately Sue isn't really up to anything and then people were bl accusing Sue of purposefully leaving metal in Korra at the end of the book to set up the book 4 plot but no, but uh, it, it's just interesting how things go and that this was one of the kind of key things going into book 4 and the end of the season is Sue uh, working with the Red Lotus in some way even into book four, like once the book was over, uh, people were thinking this. The investigation continues, and this is where I suppose where Mako comes more into play as the actual uh, detective investigator here. He's obviously fairly high up in the Republic City Police Force at this point in time. That only improves going into book four. And uh, I just like that they do establish that that's one of Mako's thing. He's intelligent, he's good at figuring things out, he is the investigator of the group. Well, they kind of joked that Sokka was that for Team Avatar and originally. With Mako, you actually have a guy who's actually an investigator. <laughs> And there's the first moment of Mako beginning to suspect Iway, the one guy who didn't get questioned during this whole 
fiasco. And they're questioning how, you know, a guy who's so young got involved in, with a group of criminals who's been in prison for nearly the amount of time he's been alive. And then Varric, out of nowhere, coming to collect the pumice stones. And I, this is ultimately the joke that goes into like their wedding day. You know, Julie will accept Varric, calluses and all. If I was trying to set someone up, you already did that, Varric. There you go, Mako, pointing out. There we go. Mako's on to it. And then they secretly go in to investigate Iway's house. And it's, it's getting very tense now because is Iway going to co come in at the wrong time? Is there a trap? You know, are the Red Lotus still in the city, perhaps? There's, a, there's some weird kind of shots here, like like this little vase thing here, this little thing, desert on a jar, like, is that meant to mean something? Like, I get that it's the, it's the one thing that Bolin moves and he doesn't know where he put it back and it's ultimately the thing that makes uh, Iway figure out that they're kind of onto him when he arrives back, but um, they made it seem like it, there was something specific about the jar just beyond the fact that it was the one they moved. They find the secret passage, which is how the Red Lotus escaped. It's just nice to see Team Avatar doing something together. Like, in the grand scheme of this whole series, they're not together on the case that much. And so this is one of the only times you really see that. What a bad explanation from Bolin. And Kor tells the truth without revealing their true purposes, to purposefully avoid being found out by him, because obviously it was set up that she lied about Lin being in the city in an earlier episode and was completely found out, so she knows to tell at least most of the truth to this guy and don't just blatantly lie. It's really tense here because they know it's him, he knows they know, and they're just n none of them are revealing um, that they know to each other. It's a really crazy situation. And then the second he touches that little thing, it's like, oh, it's on. They're all, everyone's ready to go. Action is about to happen. metal bending. He just happens to have a super defensive iron like metal wall there. <laughs> and just, just to reveal that you know, Core is still fairly new to metal bending, so she can't just jump out a wall and rip it apart. She has to ready her stance, get it right, the big wall, and then she gets it through. So I like that she's not just amazing at it just yet. And then look at this for a shocking moment, just like walk in the door, explosion, and then the way her eyes were animated there, with the, you can see the explosion in her eyes, and you're like, they didn't just kill Team Avatar, but no, Korra saves them with an airbending shield. And Iway has escaped to set up the next episode, obviously.
And then, yeah, you see Sue is betrayed by the fact that, you know, she trusted Ai Wei so much. And then again, the eye movements there from Sue, like, they really almost feels like they want you to believe that Sue is partly behind this as well. Because if Ai Wei's now a traitor, does that mean that his truth interview of Su Yin is also false now? That he knew she was lying, but he lied about it. And stuff like that. So It's really interesting. Like, um, I know it's, it's like, oh, well, it's not blatantly obvious that Sue is evil or anything like that, but there, there are some hints here that kind of lead towards that. It's interesting. Uh, who? Kuvira again? I oh, like it, like, even though, like, you, you kind of know, like, Kuvira is okay, they're going to be the villain of book four. It's interesting to look back on book three and just see the amount of times if there's a guard that speaks, it's her. If there's something that Sue needs to be doing, she usually contacts Kuvira. And they want to go after him, but Lin obviously doesn't want it to. But then Sue goes get under goes behind Lin's back and actually says, No, go ahead with it. Because she wants to know the truth about Ai Wei. Because she can't accept the fact that someone so that's been so close to her and so high up in the city would just betray her like this. And again, because she lied to Lynn and didn't tell her about that she's going to do this and actually give them the means to go after Ai Wei, it, it's another thing that just adds on to that thing that makes you suspect Sue, that she is doing all these kind of weird things going behind people's back, acting a little bit odd than what we've seen so far. Um, but at the end of it, it's just that she's affected by the fact that someone so close to her betrayed her, and that's why she's acting so odd. She isn't evil or behind any of this. And yeah, you just have that team avatar are at last, you know, back together, they've got their new avatar, they're going after Ai Wei. That's some plot finally into the season. Um, it's more action based, it's focused more on Korra versus the villains. She wants to know why they want to capture her um, the plot has finally come into the series, and this episode specifically is good, but there's definitely not as much to discuss in this episode as there are in many of the other episodes. The first half of the episode is a big fight scene, it's really well done, the kidnap attempt doesn't work, and then it's an investigation about how did they get into the city that's so well protected, highways revealed. So There's some key points to this episode. But it's definitely not the best episode of the season, so that's been a commentary. Thanks for listening, and bye.